These seminars are one of my favorite parts of the year when it comes to jujitsu. I love getting this caliber of an instructor out here to help us all out. And every every time I take something away, I change something about my game. Or can I use you? So we're going to talk a little bit about what happens once your guard gets passed. Once your guard gets passed, normally people end up taking the cross side position, right? Mm -hmm. And normally what happens is. So you're going around and you go to pass my guard. People are putting their hands here like this to defend, to keep our opponent away. But what happens is with my arms reaching out, if you put, just put some weight on me, do you see what happens, how I start to go to my back? Okay. So the problem with using our hands once the guard has been passed is one, the arms are pretty weak limbs, and two, for me using my hands, if I have to deal with any pressure, if there's any pressure that comes on my hands, what happens is I start to go flat to my back. Now, that's one of the huge things we always talk about from the bottom of the cross side position. We never want to be flat on our back, right? You guys know that. You, you always hear your instructor say, get to your side, get to your side. You are, when you're on the bottom, you want to get to your side. But what you can see is any type of pressure on my hand or my arm ends up flattening me on my back. Okay. And so one of the biggest tools that I feel was really, really helpful for even pre preventing the person from, from putting you flat on your back is establishing the underhook. Okay. So what happens is anytime someone goes to pass my guard, my hand is immediately already underneath his armpit. Okay. So this is, will be a huge tool to help you guys because now as you go to pass, go ahead and pass, pass, and flatten me out. You see how he can't flatten me out? Flatten me out? No. <laughs> if he doesn't have my arm, even from here, a lot of people use this arm as a frame, but once weight starts to come on my arm, I start to get smashed on the bottom. The other thing is that is a huge element that he needs, this underhook, in order, because a lot of people use the head and arm control, right? Is that more common with a lot of people? This type of control. Once he has the ability that he has the underhook, now I'm in a lot of trouble. This is a very, very difficult position to escape because my elbow and my shoulder are under control. Okay, so that's a, something that's really, really important to understand. The main two elements that the person on top needs to be able to control you are your shoulders and your elbow. Those are the two elements that the person on top needs to control in order to be able to hold you on the bottom of the cross side position. And so our job is to always take away those two elements. So when you were passing here, after you got around and I said, flat me out, you kept trying to grab my elbow, yeah. right? Because my, you couldn't get my shoulder flat, so watch what happens. So I'm here, if he has control of my elbow, just lift my elbow up, right? I go flat. So what I was doing, I was immediately tucking my elbow, right? And so go flat me out. Which then allows me to get back to my knee very easy and come back to the top. So the first thing I want us to play around with a little bit is just start to get used to diving this hand in for the underhook anytime someone goes around a pass because once they pass, the last thing we want to do is get flattened on our back. That's really when we get stuck. We get flattened on our back and then the person kind of establishes their hand positioning and then it becomes a very, very difficult situation to escape. So I want you guys to play around with just letting the person walk around, so no problem, he's walking around. But my hand is already diving, and as my hand dives in, I'm already straightening my arm and turning my shoulder into him. So go. So this is taking zero effort for me. You feel that? Can you feel how hard it is to get me a flat on my back or not? From that position, are you doing anything to stop him from just walking around to the other side of your head? Walking this way? No, not right now. It, if he walks around this way, I'm already to my knees. So the thing is, and this is what's important to understand about flattening me out. In order for him to flatten me out so you're on your side, remember, the 
two elements we need are what? Shoulder and elbow control, okay? And so if I can connect my chest to his shoulder, no, just wait. So if I connect my chest to his shoulder, I can flatten him out. As soon as I go here, it's very difficult for him to flat, it's very difficult for me to flatten him out. I need to stay perpendicular to him, okay? In order to drive him and flatten him. So once I start to lose this angle, once I'm not perpendicular, so right now, you see, you feel how I have control your shoulder for? Yep. And you can get flattened? As soon, just move, wait, 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 just move your hip out a little bit. There. He changed the angle of his hip. Do you feel like I can flatten you? Nope. Okay, now watch. As I walk around, do you feel like I can flatten you? So, can you create that same pressure on the back of his shoulder, though, to flatten him the other way? This way? Like, if you come around this way. And push this way. But now I'm going to push him to his belly. I don't want him on his belly because then he's back on his knees. And then, which we, which is something we will cover tomorrow. We're going to talk about turtle position. So what you're saying is if I do something like this. See, I don't want, I don't want this situation where he's on his knees. I lost control already because the whole purpose of passing the guard was to keep him flat on his back, right? I want to be on top. Now I'm, not, I'm above him, but from that position when he's underneath, he actually has a lot of ability to take the top position. Yeah, that makes sense. So let's play around with that, guys, a little bit. I want, to, I want you guys to play around with getting the underhook and staying on your side and feeling if the person on the top can flatten you out. Remember, it's a lot of turning your shoulder. So once they pass, underhook, and make sure you keep your shoulder turned. All right? My partner is, a, is a, like a phenomenal kickboxing instructor. And he was teaching me how to throw a punch one day. And he was talking about when we throw a punch, if I actually turn my shoulder and rotate my hand, I get another one or two inches out of the punch. So I get a little bit more reach because when my hand goes out here, actually, can you stand up just so you can see? If I just straighten my arm here, my, my hand goes up. But as soon as I start to turn my shoulder, I get a few more inches out of the punch. So, and those, you know, when you're fighting, those one or two inches make a, a world of difference, right? If I, if I can hit my opponent from further out. And so just from seeing that movement, I realized if I want to stretch my shoulder, just from me turning my hand down and rotating my arm, okay? So I'm not trying to grab him. I'm just trying to stretch my arm. And I turn my thumb down. Okay. From here, go, let me out. <laughs> so you can see I'm not even doing anything with my feet. It's just the position of my body and my shoulder that really prevents him from being able to flat me out. Right? And now what you guys should feel is even though you're on top, and you've passed the guard, which for most people the jiu-jitsu, hey, you've passed the guard, you're in the top position, you should, that's a dominant position, right? You should feel comfortable. But do you feel comfortable? No. You don't feel like you have control, right? So that's kind of a weird feeling to be in the dominant position, past the guard, which is what you're supposed to do, right, to establish. And then all of a sudden, even after you've achieved everything you wanted, you still don't feel good. Does that make sense? So, Play around with, instead of grabbing, because I saw a lot of people grabbing, turn your arm. And my hand stretches past him. The goal for me is to stretch my arm past him. So, and this will be important for some of the escapes that we do later. So just from here, go flat me. See how he wants to get inside? Now he can flat. Right, so I'm always, even when he goes to get his hand inside, I never allow him to pummel under. Can't allow him to control my shoulder, right? So play around with that a little bit, guys, and then we'll start to talk about if I get flattened out. We'll go from there. Yeah.